Hi, I'm Andrew Burke, and I'm a developer advocate with Linode. And today, I want to tell you all about images in Linode and the cool things you can do with them. Now, by images, I don't mean pictures of my cats or shots from a hiking trip last summer, although in certain ways, they're kind of similar. So if a photograph is a snapshot of a view at a moment in time, a Linode image is like a snapshot of a server at a moment in time. And these can be handy in all sorts of different ways. So for example, if you have a server that you set up just how you like it, it's got exactly the right tech stack you need and just the right configuration, you can save that as an image, sort of like a save point in a video game. And then you can come back to that if something goes horribly wrong with your live server, you can simply restore it from the image and you're back to your beautiful, pristine starting state. Another thing you can do is if you have an image that you like, you can then deploy that image to multiple servers in multiple locations in all the different data centers that Linode has around the world so people anywhere can have quick access to what you're serving up. And finally, another thing you can do is if you have a server that isn't being used much anymore or at all, you can save that and stash it away as an image and then turn off or even delete that server when you're not using it and save yourself a whole lot of server costs and then simply restore it from the image later if it's something that turns out you need at a later date. So today I'm going to show you how to make an image from a Linode. They're going to show you how to deploy an image to a Linode. And then I'm also going to show you how to upload your own images you might have gotten from somewhere else or built yourself up to the Linode ecosystem. Now to show you how images work, we're going to build our own little custom machine. Now, I've been coding for a while and I've done a lot of work using the terminal-based text editor Emacs. Now, one thing that always bugs me about working on servers is that most servers don't have Emacs installed. Uh, instead, they have VI or Vim, and I have nothing against VI or Vim, but I've already got the muscle memory in my fingers for Emacs. So I'm always installing Emacs on any server that I'm working on, which gets to be kind of a nuisance. So today, we're going to build ourselves a new Linode, and we're going to add Emacs to it, and then we're going to save that Emacsified Linode as an image, and then build new Linodes from that image that already have Emacs on them, which gives us a fresh start. We don't have to worry about that extra annoying step at the beginning. And I'll show you how to do this step by step, and you can follow along on your own computer. And this will only take you a few minutes. You don't even have to know Emacs. I'll Make sure you know how to get in and out and do some basic stuff in there. Now, if you do want to follow along, make sure to check the notes below for a promo code for $100 of free credit on Linode, which is actually quite a lot. You can actually do quite a lot of experimenting and playing around with stuff for just $100. So are you ready? Here we go. Let's do it. Now, after you sign in, you get a landing page, which would be a list of all your Linodes if you had any, but probably you're just getting started. It's just going to have a placeholder page, but it does have a big button on it called Create Linode, which is exactly what we want to do. So let's hit that button. Now, this creation page has a bunch of tabs, and one of them is a marketplace, which is full of fully loaded, fully set up servers already. Uh, everything from gaming servers to security scanners to cloud storage and more. But let's switch back over to this other tab and just pick a basic operating system for now. Now, we have lots of distributions to choose from, as you can see here. But let's just pick Debian 11. Why not? And then for region, uh, I'm in Canada, so I'm going to pick Toronto. So we have a server in the six. And then for CPU, there's lots and lots of different options, but let's keep this simple by simply picking the shared CPU tab and picking the Nanode, which is a really basic system that's one gig of RAM and 25 gigs of storage. But it costs very little, only 18 cents a day. And you can still do a fair bit of simple scripting and hosting with this kind of level of machine. In fact, back in the day, I used to run a whole business on a machine with less power than this. Now, the label section, it's already got a label. Uh, feel free to give it a different label. If you want to add tags, feel free, although they're not necessary. And then there's a password. And uh, don't forget your password. Note it down somewhere or put it in a password manager because there's not really an easy way to get that back once you've set it up. Uh, if you do end up screwing up on the password and forgetting it, just delete this nano and start again. Uh, if you also have a public key, if you have to happen to do the RSA thing and SSH, uh, you can put your public key in here if you want to do it that way and skip the password part. Don't worry about the rest of the stuff on this page. That's more for advanced stuff. And you'll see the Create Linode button on the side is now active. So hit that button, and it'll start creating your Linode. Now, it's going to take a little while, so maybe have yourself a coffee or something. Once your Linode is ready, you can go to the profile page, and you can see in the top right that there's an IP address. In fact, the whole SSH command you'd need. And so you can just hit that little button to copy it to your clipboard and open your terminal, and then paste that in and that will get you connected to your new 
nanode. Now you might get a certificate warning like this here. That's all fine. Just say yes. And then now we're inside our new machine and you'll see that it's a Debian machine and we're in as root and it also doesn't have Emacs. Boo. Well, it's okay. We can fix that. So we're going to use apt, which is the package manager that Debian and Ubuntu use. So we're going to go apt get update, which makes sure we have the latest version and apt get install Emacs. Now we're in root, so we don't have to worry about sudo or anything like that, but this install process will take a while. So I'm going to speed that up a little bit as you don't have to wait there for several minutes while it all installs. But okay, now that's done. So now we have Emacs. And if we try getting into Emacs, you can see it works. And we can type a few things here, see how it goes. Now we're ready to move on. So let's get out of Emacs. And if you don't know how to do that, it's control X and then control S to save the file, which you want, so you can see it there, and then control X and then control C to quit. And now we have ourselves a nice starting machine with a text editor that I can actually use. Anyhow, it would be great to be able to save ourselves this annoying first step of installing Emacs on every machine we build. So we're going to save this as an image. So let's get an image from this machine. Uh, first thing to do is to power it off uh, so that we don't make an image saved in the middle of some kind of other transaction. Uh, and then once it's powered off, go over to the images area and then click on create image. This will give you a little option to pick which Linode you want to use. There's only the one, so that's pretty straightforward. And then which disk to use from that Linode. And of course, also that's only one, so that's also straightforward. And then you give it a label uh, and any notes you might want to have of describing this machine. And then when you're ready, hit create image. And it'll run for quite some time, making a new image out of your server. So have yourself another coffee. And now when it's ready, our new image will be in the custom images section. And now we can do whatever we want with our running Linode, even delete it completely, and this original image will still be there. Now, there is a small cost to storing images, but it's only 10 cents per gigabyte per month. So let's revive this machine and see what we can do with it. We go to the custom images tab and we find our image in the list. There's only the one, so it's pretty easy. And then we're going to click the three dots in the far right side there, and that'll bring up a menu. And that menu will have the option deploy to new Linode. And there's also another option there called rebuild an existing Linode, which is kind of cool because you can take a Linode that's running and replace it with whatever's in the image. This is handy. This is sort of like a save point in the video game, like I mentioned later. This is handy for cleaning up a machine that may have gotten messed up somehow or other. Now, let's just use the deploy to new Linode option, though. And then it gives you your builder panel, just like we had before when we created a new one. And you can pick any kind of server right now. It's in a multiple GPUs, lots of RAM, etc. And you can also decide where to put it. Now, I've always wanted to go to Japan. Uh, I've always wanted to go to Tokyo and do the shopping and try all the cool food. But travel is difficult. There's a long way to go. And uh, I've never had the chance to get there. But if I can't be there myself, I'd really love to have a chance to have a server there at least. So we're going to restore this in the Tokyo data center, which is pretty cool. And anyway, this is now going to run for a while and get yourself another coffee or maybe a tea if you're going to Japan, who knows, and uh, it'll start building. Now you can see our new machine is there. So let's go into its profile and you can see in the top right corner there, the new IP address, very different from our Toronto IP address. And there's that copy button and we hit that copy, go to our terminal, that SSHSS in to our new machine and check it out. There's our text file. And if we try to open it in Emacs, there you go. It's exactly like it was before. It's a perfect copy of our previous machine, but it's in Tokyo instead of in Toronto. And this is cool because now I can set up copies of this machine anywhere I want. Uh, let's do one in Frankfurt and put another one in Mumbai and maybe another in New Jersey. And they're all identical. They have all, all already have Emacs on them. And this, you can imagine, is great for deploying a custom stack of servers uh, with fast access from anywhere around the world. And you can see we very, very quickly did this straight from our image. Linode also lets you upload your own images that you might have on another server somewhere or a virtual machine of some kind. And now setup is a little bit tricky. Uh, you got to get it set up just right for it to run properly in Linode. And that's a bit out of scope here. But if once you do have an image uh, that is properly set up, make sure it's an image file, .img file that you've compressed with gzip. And once you're ready, you can hit create image. But instead of just creating, pick the upload image tab. And then you're going to pick a label and description and a region and a CPU, just like before. But instead of just hitting create, you now drag and drop that compressed image file. And I've got this Ubuntu image uh, that I found that I set up. 
and then that's going to run for a while, so have yourself another coffee. And then it's in there and it can be used just like any other image. And that's images on Linode. So please check out the channel and subscribe to get more great videos from all of our great team of developer advocates at Linode. And leave a note below, uh, let us know what you think and what you'd like covered next. And until next time, this is Andrew Burke wishing you all happy coding and happy hosting. Thank you.